In this video, I will be giving you all my ultimate guide for raising Campanatus ant queens, as well as giving you all a timeline of what you should expect at each individual stage of their development. I'm treating this sort of as a mini-series, where the first video is going to be about the founding process, and the second video is going to be about ensuring the success of your colony once it has had its first workers. The stars of this video will be three Campanatus Novaborakensis queens and one Campanatus what I assume to be Vicinus queen. I have months of footage gathered from these queens, from when they first were caught to when they've had their first workers and been moved into a nest. So, I hope you all enjoy this video, because this is the longest video I have made on my channel. Each Novaborakensis queen is going to be labeled 1 through 3 throughout the whole video on the top left. Number 1 is most colorful, which is this queen that you see here, and number 3 is going to be the least colorful. Over my years of raising Campanatus queens, I always like to give them a little bit of honey at the very beginning when I put them in their test tube. From what I have noticed, this gives them more energy to lay more eggs, and it seems to calm them down a little bit when they can eat something. Queen number 4 is going to be the Campanatus Vicinus Queen. I'm not 100% sure if it is Campanatus Vicinus or not, so let me know in the comments section below if you have any information. This is the box I'll be using to found my ant colonies. I have four test tubes in here, each containing a queen, and I have some blue tape as well as some paper towels between them so that they do not bang into each other. I found that if you just put a couple of other pieces of paper towel on top as well as maybe some bubble wrap or something that is optional, then you can keep them warm and also secure so that the test tubes do not move around when you move the box. 13 days later, I checked on the queens. Queen number one here, as you can see, which is the most bright and colorful, has around eight eggs. As you may recall from my very early episodes on this channel, I used to keep this species, and this queen looks a lot like the queen I had back then. I was very new to ant keeping back then, and I think I stressed out the colony by checking on them too much because there were only around 10 workers, and the queen ended up dying. Hopefully, one if not all of these queens will prosper, and I will have a chance again to keep this species. They are among my favorite. Here is queen number two. When I first caught these queens, I was not sure if queen number one was the same species as queen number two and three because of the colors. But, spoilers, as they had workers, I noticed that they were the same color and that it was just color variation between the two queens, so they are of the same species. But besides that, queen number two is doing especially well. She has around 10 or 11 eggs and she seems to be very healthy. Here we have queen number three. Like I stated earlier, she looks very similar to queen number two, especially on video, but I can tell the difference because I have lettering on their tubing, which helps me figure out which one is which, and also queen number two is a little bit more vibrant. With that said, she is performing about the same as the other two colonies, with around 10 eggs. She doesn't seem to be very disturbed when I pick up the test tube, as most Campanatus queens are compared to some others like Formica. Here we have queen number 4. She is in an Ants Canada test tube setup, which is a pretty good test tube because of the non-rolling features, but the problem is that it's plastic. You can see that there are cracks along the side of the test tube, and with use comes more scratches, which means less visibility, especially from when you're filming. Something interesting I noticed about this queen is that her eggs are a lot more orange, and they are also a lot bigger than the other species. Here is a comparison between one of the other queens. I don't remember which one because this is voiced a few months after the recordings, but with that said, she's also doing very well. 
The next time I checked up on the colonies was about two weeks after the last recordings, which was around a month after I captured them. Here you can see queen number one. Her water levels are getting a little bit low, and also there is a start of some mold on her test tube, but she overall is doing well still. She has laid some new eggs, and she also has some small larvae and a couple of big ones too, which are about ready to start pupating. Because a few of the larvae are big enough to start spinning their cocoons, the queen has provided them something to grip onto so that they can more easily start spinning their cocoons. What she is doing here is grabbing some cotton and pulling it apart so that they can grab onto it easier and start spinning their cocoons in the next couple days. I am lucky to have gotten this on film. Here is queen number two. She has more bigger larvae than queen number one with about five or six and she also has some smaller larvae just like queen number one. She hasn't laid as many new eggs since, but I'm sure that that's about to happen because there's a couple of them in the test tube already. As for queen number three, she has a larger amount of big larvae compared to any of the other queens. With that said though, she has no new eggs and less small larvae than the others. She even has one of her big larvae starting to pupate, which is faster development than the other two queens. I think that what happened here was she decided to focus all of her energy on her existing larvae and not to lay new eggs. This larva must have just started spinning its cocoon. You can see that it is very transparent still and the larva is working away at it. Over the next couple of weeks, this cocoon, as well as the other larva which are just behind it and spinning their cocoons, will turn into worker ants, and this queen will be finished with her founding stage. As for queen number four, she has not laid any new eggs, but she has also not eaten any of hers either. She still has all five of her eggs which are now larvae, and they are pretty big too. In a few days to a week, these larvas will be big enough to spin their cocoons, and then in a couple weeks after that, they will become worker ants too. Here is queen number one that same night. I didn't bother to set up my filming setup, but I wanted to do a little update because you can see there is now mold in her test tube. Some of her larvae has also spin cocoons from when I last showed you them being covered by the cotton but this is somewhat concerning news. 12 days later, I checked up on all of the colonies again. About a week prior to this though, I did check up on them and I moved queen number one into a different test tube setup because unfortunately it grew too moldy for her to complete her founding stage in that old setup. All of the colonies now have pupa and also, I re-lettered their test tubes so you can see which colony is which from a top-down view. Queen number one, now in her new test tube setup, is a little bit more stressed than before. I saw that she ate some of her new eggs that she had produced, but she still has all of her pupa. She still seems to be doing very well, and I am hopeful for her future, this is just a minor setback. Here is queen number two. She has around 10 pupa, a good amount of small larvae, and a lot of eggs underneath the pupa. One of the pupas you can see is very dark, which means that it is about to hatch, and she will finally have her first worker. Her test tube setup is not molded, and she has a good amount of water, so this queen is outperforming the other ones. Here is queen number three again. I forgot to mention that I also had to move her into a different test tube setup, and honestly I forgot about it because this happened months ago. 
With that said, she also has a lot of pupa and she did start laying more eggs, which is very nice. So this queen is also looking very promising. Queen number four is again steadily caring for her same batch of eggs that she laid initially. She has five pupas now and seems to be doing very well at keeping them healthy. On the same day, queen number two had its first worker. It is super light still because it just hatched and you can see its cocoon on the other end of the test tube. This queen seems to be doing very well at keeping her area clean, hence why she's still in her original test tube setup, and she moved all of her garbage to the other side of the nest. Three days later, this is what Queen 2 looked like. You could now call it Colony 2 because she has three workers and two more that are just about to hatch. Here is Queen 1 50 days after I caught her. She now has four workers, a fifth one on the way, and some new eggs. This queen will likely have more workers by the end of the year and will hibernate with around 10 workers. Now that this colony has four workers and their exoskeletons have hardened, they can be given some nectar. The ants are very cautious of this because they have seen their cotton of their test tube get removed and been replaced by this syringe. Once I put the cotton back and they were able to smell the aroma of the nectar, they calmed down and started drinking it. You can see here that the queen was especially interested in this nectar. She has gone 50 days without eating anything, because the last time she ate anything was before she left her main colony back when she had her nuptial flights. Unfortunately, the footage of Queen 2 was corrupted from this day, so I'm moving on to Queen 3. You can see here that she has a lot of workers now, and also a very large amount of brood. The reason why she has so much brood is because I brood boosted this colony. Brood boosting is where you grab eggs or larva or pupa from a different colony that is of the same species and give them to your colony. Over the coming weeks, when these new pupa hatch into workers, this colony, as well as the other colonies that I brood boosted, will have a larger worker force than they normally would have had which means that the colony will be better prepared for winter than they otherwise would have been. Queen number four has three workers, two pupa, and finally has laid a couple more eggs. They were very interested in the nectar when I gave it to them, and I have a feeling that this colony is going to be very well set for the winter, even though they have less workers than the other colonies. This could be because of the species or that the queen is just a bit slower than the others, but either way, they are still well prepared for winter. So, with that said, I hope all of you have gained some valuable information on what to expect for the first 50 days after you catch your Campanatus ant queens. I caught three Campanatus novaborakensis queens because not all of them performed the same as you have seen. Having multiple queens leads to a better chance of getting a prospering ant colony, but it also provides more of a workload. I'm going to hibernate all of these colonies and then I'm going to release the two least performing Campanatus novaborakensis queens in the spring. With that said, I hope all of you enjoyed this video. It has been the longest video I've made on this channel and it has taken a lot of effort to put all of these clips together because it took months for me to record all of this. So leave me a like if you do like this style of content and wish for me to do this with more species because I will be glad to. 
I will link all of my socials in the description below, including my Discord server. If anyone wants to know anything about queen ants they have caught, or just ant information in general, then go check it out. Thank you all for watching, and I will see all of you next time. Peace. Thank you.